Praise the Lord. And happy Father's Day to all of our amazing fathers, whether you are Papa, Father, Dad, G-Pop, whatever it is, we say we celebrate you today. We thank God for you. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we have come to rejoice and be glad. While you are worshiping with us today, why don't you go ahead and remember to like, share, and comment so that all of your family and friends can join in with us on this day. And remember, June 27th, we are back live and in the place yeah. at Fifth Street. Yeah. Yes, we are coming out of this pandemic and entering in this building with praise. Remember to check the website so that you can register. We want you to be in the place, but we've got to be right in the place. So look forward to June 27th. Again, this is your day. This is our day. Our pastor, A. Byron Coleman the third and first lady, Minister Dr. Sherry A. Coleman, we are delighted to worship with you. Praise team. Let's kick this thing up.
God, y'all ready to dance today? Come on, it's Father's Day. We're gonna put our Woo! you got your sneakers on. There you go, Brother Allen. I should have worn my sneakers too, but that's all right. <laughs> Woo! 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 What move we got? What move we got? What move we got? What, we got? what we doing? We're Come on.
Jesus and all that he's done for us. I saw cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Great God, great God, great God, great God. Ain't nobody like him. Ain't nobody like him. Great God, great God, great God, great God, great God. Do it again, son. Great God, great God, great God, great God. Ain't nobody like him. Ain't nobody like him. Great God, great God, great God, great God, great God. Great God, great God, great God, great God. Ain't nobody like him. Ain't nobody like him. Great God, great God, great God, great God, great God. Come on, do it again with us. And because you are a great God, yeah. I don't care what we're going through, yes. but we have everything that we need. If you need healing in your body today, God can be your healer. Yes. If you need saving for your soul today, God can save your soul. If you need encouragement in your mind, God will give you peace of mind. Because the great I am, he provides for me. Hallelujah. Just think about it. Type in the comments, I have everything I need. Because Jehovah Jireh, he will provide. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and center yourself as the musicians play. Hallelujah. God, we bless your name. We adore your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. There's nothing too hard for you, God. Hallelujah. Oh. Yes, Lord. I have 
have everything I need. I have everything I need. I have everything I need. I have everything. I have everything I have everything I need I have everything I need Lord I have everything I need God we thank you for being everything to us I have I have everything I need the great I am the great I am that he'll be your strength. You are, you are my strength when I am weak. Yes, you are God. You are my strength when I am weak. Oh, you are my strength. You are my strength when I am weak. The great I am. The great I am. Hallelujah. Provides for me. The great I am. The great I am. Somebody needs to sing that again. God, you are my strength. Yes. You are my strength. When I Somebody am needs to encourage themselves on this morning. God, you are my strength. You are my strength. Yes, Lord. My strength, you are my strength. Where I am, weak. the great I am, the great I am, provide.
for visiting us thus far. Thank you for pouring out your spirit. Continue to shower us with your favor. Allow us to proclaim this gospel that your folk might be edified, that you might be glorified, and that the devil will be horrified. Thank you in the name of Jesus. Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove. My God. Go ahead and stay right here with us. Fill us with your love. God, I felt that. God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, every heart said amen. 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 Come on, thank God for this praise team, for these musicians, this technical staff. Go ahead and thank God for them. Thank you, praise team. Thank God for them. What an awesome, awesome group of people. Happy Father's Day to every father, mentor, whoever you are. Um, we give honor to God for you on this day. Truly, we are blessed to all of the fathers. We do celebrate you on today. Often we highlight Mother's Day, and we don't give Father's Day as much attention as Mother's Day. You can't get a, a, a table in a restaurant on Mother's Day, but you can seat 15 people at immediately at any restaurant. So we want, <laughs> we want to thank God for every father, whether they're living or deceased, every mentor, Godfather. It doesn't matter who you are. If you've influenced somebody's life, we ought to thank God for you. Somebody say amen. Beloved, thank God for you all watching us on today. Well, on next Sunday, June 27th, it is our first Sunday back into the sanctuary. I pray for everybody that comes on that Sunday. You better get ready. Somebody say amen. You better get ready. It's going to be an amazing Sunday. I, I would not be surprised if somebody got healed on that Sunday. 
I, I, I'm not surprised if somebody got healed. They, they had a diagnosis, but when they walked in the door, there was such a, an anointing in the place. Yeah, God have mercy. So June 27th, you can expect us to be here. You'll see all the instructions online this coming week as to how you come into the church, come into the sanctuary. We're going to exercise caution as usual. It's bad that I have to say this to my people, but I have to because I'm a liberator. And a liberator will tell you all what they're doing on that side of town, we're not doing on this side of town. So, so if you want to do what they're doing, you need to go where they are. But we don't mimic behavior of other people. We do what's best for our people. And so you will see we have some guidelines for you to follow. Um, not, not extreme, but enough where we can be safe. Um, and you will hear me say during the week online, if you choose not to follow those instructions, well, let's just hope that you choose to follow those instructions. Somebody say amen. Amen. That's just the way it's going to be. Beloved, I do have a word for you all this Father's Day. This is, of course, a sermon for fathers, for men. Uh, sister, you ear hustling. Somebody say amen. But I'm going to make sure you get something from this sermon. Get something from this sermon. Why, what an amazing opportunity to be here on Father's Day. Amazing opportunity. And so we share with everyone today on this Father's Day. Make sure you celebrate those male individuals that have made an impact in your life. Make sure you honor those, even those that are deceased, that you honor those uh, who transformed you, who offered you advice, who lifted you up, who were there for you, who told you what you needed to know, even when you didn't want to hear it. Somebody say amen. So make sure you honor them some way, some house, whisper, prayer, it doesn't matter. Honor those men in your life. Somebody say amen. There's a text uh, out of Judges, Derek, the third chapter, the 31st verse. Uh, a, a, an obscure text, Reverend Don Bowes, an obscure text. This is a text, many of you are not familiar with this text. You've never seen this text. Um, you may never see this text after this Sunday. But I got, I got one verse out of Judges, the third chapter, the 31st verse. And it reads as follows. After him was Shamgar, the son of Anath, who killed 600 men of the Philistines with an ox gold, and he also delivered Israel. Let me read that again. After him was Shamgar, the son of Anath, who killed 600 men of the Philistines with an ox gold. And he also delivered Israel. A few minutes, I want to talk from the subject, beat the odds. Beat the odds. Uh, there is a story in African-American narrative, thank you, Derek, that should serve as the inspiration and motivation to every individual. The story is of a man called Emperor Shields Green, who, according to uh, the narrative, ran away from slavery after the death of his wife and fought every day afterwards to free the rest of his family. His name is Emperor Shields Green. Uh, what makes the story so profound is that he had the opportunity to meet Frederick Douglass, the great African-American statesman. It is recorded that the two men had a conversation about Impro Green's decision to go fight with John Brown, the abolitionist, in Harper's Ferry, Virginia. Frederick Douglass asked Emperor Green, what did it feel like to finally be free, to no longer be a slave, but in fact, to breathe free air? Uh, he replied this, please listen, I don't know because until my family is free, I am not free. So with that, against all odds, Emperor Green makes his way back down south, risking his life and the life of his family to achieve one goal, and that was freeing his family. Frederick Douglass told him that to fight with John Brown was a suicide mission. He told him to go back down south, risk being captured, was foolish. But for Emperor Green, he was determined to beat the odds and free and liberate his family. Uh, beloved, this is not 
not only the story of, Af this is not the only African American narrative of African American men and women who even though the odds were stacked against them, found the strength to beat the odds. Often in this society, if we look at men, particularly black men, we are presented as victims and unable to beat the odds. Too many times this culture uh, uh, looks at black men, presents black men as being incapable of beating the odds. Since time and memorial, society has worked hard to depict black men as incapable of beating the odds. But check the record and what you will discover is a litany of men who one by one, regardless of what they said about us, did to us, we always beat the odds. Somebody say beat the odds. When they said we couldn't do medicine, in comes Daniel Hills Williams, the first African American cardiologist who performed the first successful open heart surgery. When they said we couldn't do mathematics, in comes Benjamin Banneker, mathematician and astronomer. When they said we couldn't be inventors, come on, look at Granville Woods, Garrett Morgan, and of course George Washington Carver. Look at what he did with a peanut. When they said we couldn't own our own businesses, in comes Charles Clinton, Charles Richard Patterson, and of course, J.H. Johnson, the founder of Ebony and Jet Magazine. You list the category that someone in society told the black man that they were incapable of achieving. And before you can blink an eye, we always beat the odds. Somebody say beat the odds. Even when the powers that be changed the rules, altered the rules, changed the words on the page, put it in fine print, changed the plays in the playbook because of fear we would succeed without fear or failure every time. We always beat the odds. Call the roll, Coleman, Jackie Robinson, Thurgood Marshall, Rath Bunch, Douglas Wilder, Henry Flipper, Count Basie, Sidney Poitier, Gordon Parks, Charles Drew, Fitz Pollard, Jack Johnson. Oh, I can't hear nobody, Arthur Ashe, Max Robinson, and I could call the role all day and all night of black men who were the descendants of folk who were forcibly captured and placed into slavery, abused for multiple generations, yet in spite of these things, in spite of these things, we always beat the odds. Somebody say beat the odds. Some folk are incapable of understanding, Brother Allen, this because some folk were born on first base. Some folk were born on second base. Some folk were born on third base, and some folk were born on home. But black men, particularly black men, but black people, weren't even invited to the stadium to play the game. Yet we fought, yet we taught, yet we learned, yet we achieved, and we always took care of our families because we beat the odds. Somebody say, beat the odds. We kept showing up and fighting for our freedom and liberation. We kept showing up being the best and the brightest. We kept showing up creating and building. We kept showing up in spaces where we were undervalued and unappreciated, and we still achieved. Yes, often we gotta remind ourselves, do it, Coleman, that we come from a lineage of people who no matter what was in their way, they always found a way because they knew God was gonna make a way. Now y'all just made it a shout right there. We come from a people, no matter what was in their way, they found a way because they knew God could make a way where there was no way. We always beat the odds. Please, 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 please hear me. Don't deceive yourself. Although I just gave you a nice little history lesson, don't deceive yourself. The odds are still stacked against us. Coleman, you better do that thing. Please don't think for a second that the odds are still not stacked against us. Black men are still the, on, the only group who died the youngest. We're still a group that is five times more likely to get arrested than white men, six times more likely to get killed by the police, twice as likely to drop out of high school, make $400 less than a white man. You name the diseases. Black men are first in every category, Delphine. Cancer, stroke, heart disease, and the list goes on and on. Even today, the odds are stacked against black men. We're marginalized, incarcerated, isolated, gunned down, assaulted, judged, condemned, and mistreated. If a, if a white man gets arrested, he can act a plum fool in front of the police and resist and won't get killed. 
we open our mouth, y'all ain't hearing me, we get gunned down. The odds are stacked against us. Check this out, Alicia. Chris Rock, when speaking on race, Chris Rock, the comedian, said it best. He said, nobody wants to be a black man. He said, nobody even want to be me, and I'm rich. <laughs> Beloved, the odds are stacked against us. Because here it is, unless you can run, shoot, pass, throw, rap, sing, dance, you are considered unqualified and insufficient. This is how things have been. This is how things are still are. Yet what we do know is that no matter what the obstacle, guess what y'all, we can still beat the odds. This confidence does not come from some external force that gives us confidence. This confidence comes from an internal force that reminds us through time and memorial, we are well able. Somebody said well able. The internal forces come from our God who every day strengthens us for the fight. Beloved, I came today to talk to some brother, some man, some son, some husband, some uncle, that I don't care what comes in your way, you can always beat the odds. Beloved, that God has equipped you and he prepared you. God has provided for you and you should never give up hope that no matter what life throws your way, you can always beat the odds. Sisters, I know you ear hustling too. So, so if you can catch something from this little sermon, go and catch it for yourself. No matter what you have to face, hear me, y'all, people will always write you off. I can't hear nobody. I can't hear nobody. Somebody watching says, says, Pastor, I know what you're talking about. Listen, people will always write you off. Here's my word for you. Hold on, Derek. Here's my word. When people write you off, here's my word for you. You ready? Let them. They can write you off, but you better know that God never have and never will write you off. You, you're not in this to give them glory. You're in this to give God glory. So you go ahead and let them with them trifling selves write you off and tell you you can't do something. You can't achieve something. You can't recover something. I got news for somebody. The devil is a liar. If God, if they write you off, God will write you in. Is there anybody that knows God wrote your name in when other folk wrote you off? <laughs> it is. God has invested too much in you for you to allow yourself to be written off. When the odds are not in your favor, that does not mean that God has abandoned you. Stand your ground, keep your eyes on him. And in the words of my best friend and classmate, Pastor Mike, God is undefeated. <laughs> I can't get, well, I run right there at their feet. He's never lost a battle. He's never lost a fight. He's never lost a patient. He's never lost a case. He's never lost anybody. Is there anybody that knows God is undefeated? <laughs> Woo! Therein is the lesson we glean from this text. Help me, y'all. Here we go. I lifted this text because it centers around a man whom 99% of y'all never heard of. A man by the name of Shamgar. His name is only mentioned twice in the Bible. This particular scripture and another one. This verse that I've listed mentions him in one verse. Here's what it says. After him was Shamgar, the son of Anath, who killed 600 men of the Philistines with an ox gold, and he also delivered Israel. One man who was somebody's son killed 600 Philistines, here it is, with a farm tool. <laughs> One man who was somebody's son killed 600 Philistines with a farm tool. Even though he's mentioned in the Bible, in one verse in the Bible, what he accomplished gives us greater opportunity to see the hand of God. Let, let me read the text again. Just bear with me a, a couple minutes. If you, if you missed it, let me read it. And after him was Shamgar, the son of Anath, which slew of the Philistines 600 men with an ox gold, and he also delivered Israel. The context of the times was such that Israel was under attack and being threatened daily. Shamgar's family, friends, and community, and so on, were constantly under attack by outside forces. Walk home, man. Shamgar's family, friends, and community 
were constantly under attack by outside forces. Mm, work it, Coleman. Shamgar's family, friends, and community were constantly under attack by outside forces. It would be customary for a warrior or a king to take this task up and engage in battle. It would be customary that someone who was trained, skilled in military tactics would be able to defeat 600 Philistines. It would in fact be expected that somebody had a history of winning battles would be able to achieve a monumental victory. But here you have Shamgar, who according to historical record was a farmer. How do we know he's a farmer? Because the tool is mentioned in the text. The tool is called an ox gold. Get it, Coleman? An ox gold is a farm tool used to keep oxen moving when they don't want to plow anymore. It's a wooden pole with a sharp point at the end. So every day, the farmer Shamgar goes out to his farm and he herds oxen. I need five people. That's all I need. Every day, Shamgar got up in the morning. He grabbed his ox gold and he herded the oxen around. Don't miss it, beloved. Wasn't nothing special about Shamgar. He was just a dude from Spencer, Oklahoma, preach Coleman, that took up his living farming. Farming was how he provided for his family. Farming was the profession either he chose or was chosen for him. Whatever the case, here it is, here it is. His family and and his friends were under threat by outside forces. So he got the unction, I got to do something. The book declares, with a farm tool, he took down 600 Philistines. Y'all just missed it, I'm gonna say it again. With a farm tool, he took down 600 Philistines. Give me a few folk that can begin to see where I'm going. He didn't have no title, he didn't have a high position, he wasn't a fancy military training, he didn't have downtown connections. Somebody would say, Alicia, the odds were stacked against him. But with a farm tool, he killed 600 Philistine. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. The farmer with an oxen with a tool as a farmer took down uh, 600 Philistines. I am sure that when time came to fight, there were some folk that wrote him off. Some folk that said, oh, that Negro crazy. He on a suicide mission. Some folks said he was messed up. He messed up too much in his past. You know Sham God? Yeah, I know Sham God. He ain't going to do nothing with that ox gold. Some folks said that man has no training. He ain't been to the right school. He don't have the right education. I know his mama and his daddy. He got everything working against him. Somebody would say he doesn't have the right pedigree. Somebody say, bro, we okay being slaves to the Philistines. You gonna leave them alone. But Sham God, knowing the odds were stacked against him, uh, resisted the naysayers and the pessimists and decided that his family and his community were worth fighting for. Can I find five folk that know Know your family and community are worth fighting for. I know we got some naysayers and some negative folk and some pessimists, but last I checked, power conceded nothing without a demand. It never had and it never will. Is there anybody know your family, your community are worth fighting? Let me do it. Let me do it. So with his faith, watch this, watch this, watch this. With his faith and farming tool. That'll preach on a whole other day. His faith and a farming tool. He, he took on 600 Philistines and defeated him. Faith and a farming tool. He took down 600 Philistines. Before any names that I previously mentioned, Shamgar is the perfect example of somebody that beat the odds. Somebody said beat the odds. I, I believe there are some, some folk that simply need to get this lesson on this Father's Day. Some sister needs to get this lesson. Some brother, some father needs to get this lesson. I do not care what you got to face. You can always beat the odds. Somebody say beat the odds. Come on, say beat the odds. I, I, I know the system is working against us. I know there's systematic oppression. I know there's marginalization. I know there's mass incarceration. I know you, we always the first last hired, first fired. I know, I know, I know, I know it's on, it's on every day. But I got news for you. You must not know the God that I serve. I don't care what you got to face. You can always beat the odds. Somebody shall beat the odds. Yay! So, so watch this. What made Shemgar a great example for you and I to beat the odds? Here it is. I'm going to give you this and I'm going to get out your way. Here it is. 
The first thing, and this is the killer, I could do this one and go home. Um, if you really want to beat the odds in your life, I don't care, even if you want to share with somebody, you want to tell somebody about this sermon, give them this point. Here it is, y'all. You ready? Here it is. If you really want to beat the odds, watch this. Start where you are. Sham God started where he was. He wasn't in a powerful position. He didn't have prestige and influence. He wasn't famous or wealthy. But he didn't wait for an opportune time. You better preach, Coleman. He didn't wait until things got better. You know how that is. He didn't wait for a promotion. He didn't wait for a raise. He didn't wait for a new job. He started where he was. Beloved, we waste time, so much time, getting ready to do something big. When God said, you better start it where you are. You can waste your life waiting for things to be different before you do something instead of just starting the day. Somebody say start today. Don't wait for something to change before you start to do something. Somebody say start today. If God placed something on your heart, a dream, a vision, a plan, a purpose, a business, an assignment, what you wait? No, start today. Somebody say today. Zechariah 4 and 10 says it like this. Despise not the day of small beginnings. Stop waiting on your shop when God has given you a stage. Help me, somebody. You don't know what God can do until you start. Somebody say start. Now, somebody just need me to say that again. You don't know what God can do until you start. I say you don't know what God can do. I felt that in my shaman, y'all. You don't know what God can do until you start. More often than not, the reason why we don't start is because we listen to too many ignorant people and we let their opinions dictate our movement. Coleman, you too heavy today. Or maybe we let some things in the past keep us from moving now. Beloved, you need to learn to get over that stuff and start where you are. Trying to save, start with a penny. Trying to get a job, fix your resume. Trying to pen a book, start with a chapter. Trying to buy a house, go look at a house. Trying to start a business, get a website trying to get healthy walk a block is there anybody that can say start where you are start where you are start where you are start where you are listen listen the other day <laughs> the other day the other day the other day dr sherry and i decided a foolish thing we decided that we would do something different for exercise. We decided instead of walking, she does a lot of it, I do a little bit of it, we would go bike ride. So we decided to go ride at Lake Hefner. Usually she walks and I walk, but today we got this brilliant idea. We gonna ride at Lake Hefner. Now, 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 <clears throat> I thought in my mind, and I think she thought, we would ride a few miles, two, three miles, and go right back. But we got to the fourth mile, and I said to Sherry, I said, how far around <laughs> is Lake Hefner? Her reply, nine, 10, point, two, 10 miles, right, Corey? 10 miles, 10 miles. Now we we made we made it, we had to make a decision. Do we turn around or do we keep going? Well, those of you who know Dr. Sherry, Holy and Hood, help me somebody. She said, come on, come on, let's go. Let's go and finish it. Help Jesus. Let me conclude the story by telling you, we finished the whole 10 miles. I'm at the end of the 10th mile. We back to how we started. I'm dog tired. Dog tired. Having a euphoric moment, Delphine, like I am tired. 10 miles, two was cool. But, but here's what Dr. Sherry said to me when, when we got ready to put the bikes back on the car. I'm tired, Alicia. But she looked at me and said, but you did it. I need somebody that's watching to get this in your spirit. Start where you are. And what you will find, it won't be easy. You're going to have some bumps on the road. You're going to have to go up some hills on the road. But what you're going to discover, that you were able to do it. 
Is there anybody that can testify? If you start where you are, don't worry about what's in the middle. Just get to where you're going. And you're going to look back and say, but I did it. I don't care about your opinion. I did it. I don't care what you think about me. I did it. Is there anybody that can give them glory and shout, I did it? I did it. I did it. I did it. That's a testimony. I did it. You just keep on working. You just keep on creating. You just keep on building. You just keep on visioning. You just keep on planning. And before you know it, you'll look and say, I did it. Is there anybody that can give them a shit? I did it. Start where you are. Start where you are. I need somebody to give them glory and shout, start where you are. Start where you are. That's it. Hold on. <laughs> That's just the first point. Y'all killing me. Sit down. Sit down. So here it is. Woo. Start where you are. You ain't got to do nothing fancy. Just start where you are. Stop waiting on somebody to confirm what God already spoke. Start where you are. Start where you are. I lose my back. All right, hold up. <laughs> Shama. Shama. Somebody needed that. I don't know where you are, but you either needed it or you need to tell somebody. You need to tell your son, tell your daughter, tell somebody, start where you are. Don't worry about having a title. Help me, somebody. All right, okay. So, Shamgar. <laughs> <Whew>. <laughs> Is, is the perfect example of beating the odds because he started where he was. Point two. The next reason that Shamgar beat the odds was not just because he started where he was. Delphine, I think we might lose it on this one. He used what he had. I love this point because somebody is waiting on something to come so you can start. Hold on. Somebody waiting on something. Don't wait. Don't wait. You already have everything you need. Shamgar not only started where it was, he used the weapon that he had. Here's, here's the shout. His resources were limited. Most people would have overlooked the ox gold Shamgar had. They would have thought, that he didn't have anything that could win the battle against the 600. But because he took what he had, God used it to defeat the Philistines. Don't make me do this, y'all. God is tired of folk, especially us, who always think we need what other folk have in order to do what they do. Y'all ain't getting what I'm saying in here. I am so tired of Negroes trying to copycat what other folk are doing in order to get what they got. Beloved, with meager resources, limited income, minimum education, do y'all know we still produce scientists, doctors, lawyers, teachers, preachers? Do y'all understand? We ain't even have half of what they had. We still ended up successful. Beloved, I, I, come, I come from a school. I come from a school, Morehouse College, that was started in the basement of a church in Augusta, Georgia. Springfield Baptist Church. His mission was to raise up trained black men who would be preachers and teachers. Don't do it, Coleman. Morehouse College, ooh, Mufasa. Morehouse College began in the basement of a church in Augusta, Georgia. Everybody think Morehouse is all that? If you only knew where Morehouse started, it started in the basement of a church. Reverend William Jefferson Watt, the founder, used what he had. 
He ain't have no endowment. He didn't have a philanthropist. Other schools had it, but he used with limited resources, and he still produced Maynard Jackson, and he still produced Dr. King, and he still produced Julian Bond, and he still produced Howard Thurman, and he still produced Lerone Bennett Jr., and he still produced Cedric Richmond, and he still produced Killer Mike. Oh, and by the way, he still produced A. Byron Coleman III. Don't you tell me that you need a lot in order to do something. God can take your little, somebody help me in here, and he can turn it into. Somebody needs me to tell them, little becomes much in the hands of God. Beloved, don't undervalue what you have. You have a skill, you got a talent, or you got a strength. Run it back, Coleman. You have a skill, you have a talent, or you have a strength. Run it back, Coleman. You got a skill, you have a talent, and you have a strength. Run it back, Coleman. You either have a skill, you have a talent, or you have a strength. Stop acting like you ain't got nothing. You got a skill, you got a talent, or you got a strength. If you want real favor, sometimes favors you get two out of the three. Show enough favors, you get all three. But I know God can take one of them things and help you turn the world upside down. Can I find five folk in here that know you got a skill, you got a talent, or you got a, y'all not going to help me now. You got a skill, or you got a talent, or you got a strength. Stop complaining about what you don't have. Thank them for what you do have. Either you got a skill, you got a talent, oh, y'all help me here, or you got a strength. Shamgar used an ox goad to win the battle he faced. I'm coming home, y'all, don't worry. God has given you what you need to win the battles you face. Stop focusing on what you don't have. Concentrate on what you do have. Stop waiting on other people to recognize what God has given to you, and doggone it, you recognize it. Stop waiting on other people to tell you, oh, you, you got it. You, you know you got it. Noah had a dream. Moses had a rod. Joseph had a dream. Noah had a hammer. David had a rock and a slingshot. Ezekiel had a wheel. Samson had a jawbone. Ruth had compassion. Deborah had a vision. Jeremiah had that fire. Y'all will help me in here. You better use what God gave you. You ought to say to yourself, regardless of what's in your way, I got something. You're never too old to use what God gave you. You're never too young to use what God gave you. And, and here's the shout, y'all. If you put what he gave you in his hands, you can sit back and watch him work. If you put it in his hands, God will do some amazing stuff in your life. If you put it in his hands, maybe the reason the turn had to happen for you is because you have yet to put it in his hands. I wish I had somebody that can testify that I, that I put it in his hands. And when I put it in his hands, it was in the best hands it's ever been in because I began to see stuff like I've never seen before. Somebody needs to say it again. Put it in God's hand and watch him work. The miracle is not in what you don't have. The miracle is in what you got right now. Last point. Bless you. Real good. Start where y'all. Go ahead. Say it. Start where y'all. Here it is. Y'all ready? Use what you got. Here's the last one. Woo. I'm going to run this dog. Here we go. Start where y'all. Use what you have. Here it is. Run down. Do what you can. <laughs> Even though the odds were stacked against him, he still fought. He didn't sit around and complain. He didn't fuss about what other folks should do. He didn't suffer from the paralysis of analysis where you talk more than you work. The books lets us know that at some point in time, do it, Coleman, he picked up his farm tool. <laughs> and instead of herding oxen, he made his way down to the battlefield. And with a farm tool in his hand, he yelled out to the Philistines, let's get it on. Beloved, can I tell somebody? You got to do what you can. When God is with you, the book says a thousand will fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand. You want to beat the odds that are against you? Do what you can. Trust that your steps have been ordered. Trust that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Trust that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will raise a standing. Trust that he'll prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemy. Trust that the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. Trust that the Lord is your shepherd and you ain't got a want for nothing. Trust that he is a refuge and strength, a very present help in a time
time of trouble. Trust that he's a way maker, a storm come, a bridge over troubled water. Trust that he's the balm of Gilead. Trust that he's the battle in the time of battle. Trust that he's with you in season and out of season. Trust that he's in your house, in your car, on your job. Trust, is there anybody that can shout, trust him? Trust him. Because when you do your part, do it, Coleman. God showed up and do his part. Now I'm really done. I got I to gotta close like this. I'm ready, y'all. The question I ask, because I am a curious one, Alicia, Ramdan, I asked one question. And I'm telling you, when I answered the question, I literally came unglued. How does one man with a farming tool kill 600 people? How does one man with a farming tool kill 600 people? Well, you got to do some research. Some commentators say that 600 represents the total number of people he killed in his life. That means over his lifespan, he killed 600. I ain't like that. Because what that does is, that puts man's explanation on a God thing. Y'all, boy, give me somebody, y'all. So, so how is it that if this can be in the Bible, unless God intervened? So in my mind, I said, in order for one man to kill 600, when he got down to the battlefield, do it, Coleman, it meant to me, Remdon, that Shamgar killed one, but God killed 20 for everyone. See, y'all just missed your shot right there. Because in order to believe, that would mean that Shamgar and God are on equal footing. And last I checked, God was bigger than the battle. And that the battle was not Shamgar's, the battle belonged to God. So that means for every one he killed, that means God would take out 20. What you trying to say, Coleman, don't you dare think that when you go into a battle and the odds are stacked against you, you better tell your enemy this ain't even a fair fight. Because I ain't the only one that showed up to the fight. I got God on my side. Is there anybody that can testify that God will win your battle? God will give you strength for the fight. God will give you strength for your battle. Listen, y'all. There are a lot of things that Shamgar can say. It's a lot of things that Shamgar and I can say. It's a lot of things you and Shamgar can say. You seen folk quit. You seen folk give up. You seen folk throw in the towel. You seen folk turn negative. You seen folk walk away. You seen folk lie. You seen folk deceive. You seen folk quit. You seen folk throw it all away. You seen folk lie. You seen folk throw in the towel. You seen folk quit. You seen folk give up. You seen folk live like they want to go to hell. Act like they don't want to go to heaven. You've seen a lot. Somebody say, I've seen a lot. But the one thing you have not seen, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. And I've never seen his seed begging for grace. There's a whole lot of stuff I see. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken. You just keep on beating the odds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just keep on waking up every morning. You just keep on magnifying God. Because what I do know, there's nothing that God won't do. Won't he do it? He'll heal your body. He'll restore your mind. He'll give you joy and sorrow. Won't he do it? Is there anybody that knows? There's nothing too hard for God. There's nothing too hard for God. Stop acting like it's hard. There's nothing too hard for God. Give him glory right now. I got to do it right now, Derek. Be not dismayed. Whatever be time, God will care of you. Yes, he will. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will yes, take care yes, of you. Will. Is there anybody that's ready to beat the heart? Then give him glory. Yes, yes, yes. Give him a shout. Yes, yes. Give him a praise right oh. now. Yeah. Man, Come on, God. give him glory. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank Somebody you. shall beat the odds. Beat the odds. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. my God. Oh, yeah. 
yes, even sir. even when the count is three two yeah. you got three balls and two strikes yeah. I don't care it is no secret what God can yeah, do yeah, 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 yeah. even if you get knocked down in the first 14 rounds <laughs> that 15th round God can still give you strength. Yes. It doesn't matter if you're losing the game and there's only one second on the clock. Yeah. You better beat them odds. Yeah. Use what he gave you. So did y'all get it? Yeah. Start where y'all. Yeah. Uh-huh. Use what you have what you and do what you can. You, you telling me you can't take them three things and just live for the next 20 years <laughs> and overcome anything. Start where y'all. Use what you have. Yeah. Then do what you can. What you can. Did you get that? Yes, I need sir. somebody to get that. Yes, sir. Stop complaining about what ain't and what is. I understand. I know the system is jacked up. If anybody knows Coleman, know. I know it is. I know it's a whole lot of pressure. I know it's a whole lot of stress. I know it's a whole lot of tension. I understand the mechanisms of evil in culture. Mm. But there is no evil that can overcome God's will. There is no evil yeah. that God can't help you overcome. So here it is. Start where you are. Yeah. Use what you have. Do what, what is you it? Can. Do what Do you what can. can. What? Yeah, As for you who wants to start a business. Yeah. As for you who wants to write a book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As for you who wants to go back to school. Yeah. As for you who wants to go after that promotion. Yeah. As for you who wants that house. That's for you who wants healing in your body. That's for you who wants peace in your mind. Start where you are. Use what you have. And do what you can. Be like Shamgar. Take the tool and win every battle in life. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's pray. Sing that, come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You gave me my hands. You gave me my hands to reach out to man to show to show. So I can hear your voice so clear. I can hear the cries of sin. I can hear the cries of sin. But can I wipe away? Can I wipe away their tears? Oh, oh, oh. You gave me my voice. You gave me my voice. That have been broken. I see hearts that have been broken. So many people, so many people to be free. Oh, oh, oh Lord, Lord, I'm available to you. Come on, right where y'all worship him with us. My Come on. will I give to you. My will I give.
available to you. Yeah. Father, we're praying for every person watching right now. Give them the revelation that it does not matter the obstacles, they can beat the odds. Does not matter what they face, they can beat the odds. Doesn't matter what's up against them, they can beat the odds. Help them to start where they are, use what they have, and do what they can. That's real truth right there. God, touch them right now. Every person watching this broadcast right now, lift their hearts, their minds, their souls, and their spirit. Give them a fresh revelation of what they're capable of doing. Fill them with your strength. Fill them with your power. Fill them with your anointing. Do it. Do it. In the name of Jesus. We declare it. We count it as already done. So move and have your way. In the name of Jesus. This is our prayer. Every heart said, Amen. Come on, bless God where you are. Bless God where you are. We thank God. So listen, and listen as Brother Valdry puts up on the screen the ways to give. Let me thank you all as always for your giving. Thank you for everything you've done as far as sowing seed and tithing to this ministry to allow this ministry to keep going so that we can yeah. keep doing what God has called us to do. Somebody say amen. amen. So we thank God for each one of you all. Listen to the people in the city, members of the church that give to our, to our, our virtual members all over the country yeah, yeah. that still give, that always give. We thank God for you all. So you all know you can give through pay, PayPal, through our website, through GiveLify, uh, or through, a cash, through our cash app. Make sure that you do that. You can mail it in. 801 Northeast Fifth Street, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. What an amazing, amazing group of people that have supported this ministry, helped this ministry to keep going. We know we have never, not one Sunday, have we stopped short of giving you 110%. Never, never. That's not how I roll. We believe in it. So you all know we love you. We thank God for you. Listen, next Sunday... I'm going to tell you now, you better be in this place. Yeah. You better make sure you're here June 27th. You might want to get here early. I got to do it like they do it at the club. Doors open at 9 o'clock. Oh. Come on now. Doors open at 9 o'clock. Don't expect to come in church and do all that walking. You know, as they old for old mother would say, stop all that walking in church. <laughs> come in, have a seat, get your mind right and ready to receive that worship. Amen. And so we're excited. You will see on a different uh, social media outlets how to register for that service. We're going to have all the protocols in place to keep everybody safe. But we intend on having a time next Sunday. So once again, I express to my staff, thank you, but I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll express that to everybody. And I want to make sure you get an opportunity to do that as well. So once again, we love you. Happy Father's Day to every father. Thank God for you. Let, let your father get the big piece of chicken. Amen. Don't fool with the big piece of chicken. Let them get the big piece of chicken. Amen. Once again, thank God for Reverend Don, praise team, staff, everybody. 
In the name of Jesus, we thank God for you. Come on, y'all. Let's get out of here. Come on, let's get out of here. Come on.